The Center for Disease Control has announced that there's been a sharp increase in sexually transmitted disease. They announced that at least 20 million new cases or new infections happened in 2014 alone. And Nick, this obviously has a lot of people worried, but there's some caveats to the story and there's some controversy to it as well, because in this case, the AIDS Health Foundation that in the past already equated this increase in chlamydia, gonorrhea, and syphilis to the rise of social media apps like Tinder and Grindr uh -huh. and Craigslist. And these sites where, you know, a casual hookup is much more likely than in, you know, 10, 20 years ago where people had to work for it. Now, right. <laughs> obviously that's a very short side way of looking at things. Immediately, Tinder and these, these companies went forward. They put a, a lawsuit to prevent this from going on. With these numbers that the CDC released, they are going at it again. They're going to release new ads and billboards all around the country trying to create this awareness that you need to be more careful if you are engaging in hookups. But the reality is that there's other reasons. And this study from the CDC hints to some of them is the cut down in hours that these health centers are open, the closing of health facilities in many places that provide testing and information and sexual health education. So that is the real reason where we see an increase. The lack of sexual education in many high schools, the fact that there's less places and less hours for these people to get tested. And now some of the increase in these diseases are actually because we see more testing. In the case of chlamydia, it's not necessarily that we have more people getting infected. We have more people discovering that they have the disease because it has no uh, symptoms. So many people go through life without knowing because they don't have the awareness, again, because there's no sexual education, that you need to get tested at least once a year. You know, Jose, th those testing centers, those medical facilities that you're talking about, they're, they're oftentimes, you know, at the forefront of a lot of these presidential de debates that we're seeing on TV. You know? part it. We have to, you know, fight hard just to make sure that we continue to see funding because a lot of people want to see that stripped away because they don't see them as health officers or facilities. They see it as the devil's facility because they're over there giving abortions and doing other terrible things. How dare they? Um, Okay, so first off, the, w what you mentioned about the, the dating apps like yeah. Tinder and Grindr or whatever, you know, if, if these studies come out and, and it's actually true that they actually really do play a large role in that, then what the hell is Tinder doing? I know it, it hurts their business, but the same way that a, a cigarette, for example, has to have on the box, you know, this will freaking kill you before you open it, you have to read that, right? So why would Tinder, if, if they know that the, the app that they're doing, for example, is, is really playing a huge role in spreading these STDs, why would they fight so hard to put it down, um, knowing that it's going to lead to a lot more people getting STDs just so that they can gain more money out of it? That's not know, cool. Initially, some people will see that, but I think that, it's not necessarily there, you know, you have to take in account personal responsibility. Mm -hmm. When you engage in one of these apps and you meet people, Tinder is not telling you go and get you know, laid, That's dude. True. You have to be the one that is responsible about it. So I, I do understand the position of Tinder and these apps. We're saying, like, why are you hating against us if we're not the ones telling people to go have unprotected it's an sex? Indirect it's an indirect correlation that yeah. they're trying to do because it draws attention to the matter. And I think it's important to create awareness. That is not the, 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 that is not wrong from the AHS, but to just equate and simplify the issue of the increase on in sexually transmitted diseases to the use of a app where people meet, I think that's a stretch. I think there's a lot of other things that creating this easy to sell controversy that a lot of writers have been writing about it in England, in the United States, they've been trying to do that connection. Why don't we look at the fact that we don't have proper sexual education in the high schools and the schools in this country, that we see that they're fighting to close down the centers where people can get tested, where people can get information on how to prevent these, these diseases. And most of the, these three diseases are highly treatable and they're reportable to the CDC, so the control of these diseases is, is very high. But at the same time, if we don't teach what we know to the kids, they just go out and, and they don't know they're going to get infected. I mean, how much do you need to be taught, though? I mean, that, that imminent threat of, you know, maybe getting HIV or another STD or getting a girl pregnant, for example, if that's not enough to make you wear a condom, then, then what's, an, what's a sexual education class going to do? Kids don't pay attention during school anyways. I mean... I think it's it's a really it's it's a problem with young kids not wearing, wanting to wear condoms. I mean, the infrastructure is there in this country much better than a lot of countries that you know certain countries in, in Africa don't even have access to condoms. Period. You know, exactly. well, not countries as a whole, but certain regions. And it's a real it's a real issue to get people to be aware of those things. So I I don't really feel that we should be blaming you know the system here. I, I think it's just people, young people, and their mentality. No one wants to wear condoms, and that's a really huge problem in this country. They think it, it'll it won't happen to me. It won't until it does, and then it's too late. 
late. Some are arguing that one of the reasons that this increase is happening is because people know about how the medical field has advanced in curing diseases like HIV that before used to be a big determinant for many people to engage in high-risk behaviors. But now that they know that these diseases are highly treatable, they seem to feel like there's not that much risk, and now we have the numbers that the risk is there and it's happening.